Boom. So I'm back. So we're here and we're in the house. Um, it's now, what is it? It's two minutes past nine. Um, thank you so much for being here. Again, a huge shout out to those people who are watching on the replay or if you are listening on the Acts on This TV audio experience. Thank you so much for being here. It's a Monday, a brand new week. We are again one week closer to getting haircuts. My hair now. I mean, this is ridiculous. I've been filming videos for Acts on This.TV today as well. And I've had to just throw caution to the wind and go sod it. I don't care what I look like. But I cannot wait for the 4th of July, Independence Day and Haircut Day. It's going to be, It's gonna. how is it? How good is it going to feel? It's going to be a wonderful day. Um, so tonight, what we're going to be doing for the next hour, I'm going to be going through with you guys. Uh, I'm going to be going through the webinars that we've got coming up on ActsOnThis.tv. Uh, we've got one coming up tomorrow night. I'm going to tell you all about it. It's with an incredible casting associate for one of the biggest casting directors in the country. Uh, we've got two of the biggest casting directors in the country coming on next week. And a director has just emailed me yesterday to confirm a very famous actor uh, will be joining us hopefully the week after. Um, so we've got some incredible webinars coming up. If you missed the webinars that we did last week, I don't know where you were because they were freaking incredible. We had um, star of Homeland and Supergirl, Mr. David Harewood, on last Tuesday. Um, it was one of the most powerful webinars I think we've done around actors' mindset and mental health as well. You know, it's not something that we've touched on these in these webinars a lot. Over lockdown, I've been doing loads of webinars with casting directors. We've done loads of, you know, in terms of casting auditions, self-tapes. We've done so much with big casting directors, but we've not really looked specifically at mindset. David Harewood incredible actor but very big on mental health psychology and mindset we we, we uh, delved quite deeply into that and then on Thursday just gone we had Mr. Matt Lucas on for a webinar um all about comedy and I was like I wasn't shocked at all because Matt's an incredible guy but like the depth that he shared with us in that 90 minutes like I was kind of blown away by in terms of how business minded Matt is when it comes to creating content um and, you know, getting it out there to ensure there's an audience, almost kind of figuring out, you know, who your audience is and whether there's a demand for your content before you even put it out. So before you make it, so you can tailor it to what you know audiences want already. And that's something that I don't think a lot of actors do. They just write what they want and they write what they think is funny. And then they just put it out there without, you know, just hope people will watch it. Whereas Matt was like, actually, you know what? If you're clever, you can tap into the zeitgeist, you know, spend time on social media platforms like TikTok right now, like Twitch, you know, that have a huge audience, particularly a younger audience as well, um, you know, who consume content online on YouTube as well um, and have a look at what is popular, what is trending. Um, and he was like, listen, you know, you can do an awful lot of damage at home from your spare room with a green screen and a, and a camera, you know, on your iPhone, like if you want to do comedy. Um, so he was uh, amazing. I'll play a couple of clips actually of what you missed tonight. I've got some clips, just standalone clips that I think are really valuable on their own. Um, David's, is Ollie on here? I don't know. David features uh, Ollie Devote. He is a, a member of the community and um yeah they were he was just really really honest ollie was like look i'm having a bit of a wobble and uh, him and david just chatted it over for about 25 minutes but i let it go on for quite a long time because i just think it's something that we all you know we all struggle with from, t from time to time sometimes we feel disconnected from the industry we question our choices we don't know whether we are doing the right thing because <laughs> let's be honest there are thousands of other far more stable careers to choose than being an actor um you know particularly in in the in the day and age that we live in right now you know it's unpredictable at the uh, at the better times if you're not a member of acts on this tv and you want to catch up with a full um my screen might go black for a second bear with me, bear, bear with me one second guys you should still be able to hear me um but yeah if you want to catch up with uh the full um the full replays of these webinars they were over 90 minutes each go to acts on this tv if you look in the preview section preview features at the top you can um, you can watch like a 15 minute preview of each one there's matt um, and there's David. Um, there's been absolutely loads of these, though. Danny Brockler, shout out to him, creator, co-creator of Brassic, got nominated for a BAFTA last week. And so did David Harewood, got nominated for his BAFTA, uh, a BAFTA for his documentary, Psychosis and Me, um, a super, super hard-hitting, vulnerable documentary of a time in David's life where, yeah, his mental health was not what it is today. So um, huge congrats to both of those. But, um, but yeah, there's Matt as well. I mean, there's just been some brilliant, brilliant guests on recently. Um, but I will play you guys now a... Um, I'll play you... What should I play? I'll play you the clip of David's uh, where we talk with Ollie. Like I say, I don't know if he's, uh, if he's on here tonight. Sometimes he joins these. But hopefully you'll just take some solace in this going, you know what, if you're not quite where you want to be right now and you're having a bit of a wobble in your head, like... 
seriously, like you are not on your own. This is pretty powerful. I'll be back in like two minutes. I've been going through a bit of a a bit of a blip at the minute with with regards to kind of self doubt and and confidence and believing in my ability to be able to make the right choices and castings and all of the bits and pieces. And that it's having a bit of a wobble. We have those wobbles all the time, you know, and um, I still deal with it. I still deal with issues of confidence, still deal with issues of um, anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, one of the best things that I've done is, is uh, uh, I, I kind of have a, I have a therapist. If you're not working or if you're getting, you're constantly being rejected or you're not getting, you're not getting the opportunities, it's tough. It's a tough game to um, keep going. It's a tough game to make yourself, um, that's where you, that's how we learn that resilience. And it's okay every now and again to feel the weight bearing down on you. It's only natural. Find a resource. Find a, a resource that you can, where you can talk to somebody, maybe it's your doctor. Just leave off the, excuse me, leave off the professional for a little bit. Yeah. And just, just regain your confidence. Find out, try and speak to somebody about what's happening in the personal so that you can, you can divorce that from the professional because uh, this is a tough business, man. It's bruising. I think it was Orson Welles who once said, you know, you can tell an actor, a, you can you can give an actor, an actor can read a thousand great reviews, but it's the one bad one that they'll go home thinking about. You a little baby there. It's my daughter, she's five. Oh, Hello. fantastic. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That's really... Mate, that's your best resource there. That's your best resource there. Don't think that it, you are alone where you are it's it's yeah. it's uh many people have been there and dude you've got to make sure she's okay boom i just thought it was such an awesome clip and i think uh you forget sometimes when you're on these webinars um, that there are hundreds of people watching. You know, that just felt like, and this is what I love about our community and what you've all created. It's not, you know, it isn't me who's done this. It's just the type of people that it attracts. Um, I think Alicia said in the chat there on Facebook, like when Ollie was on with David chatting, because um, I just bring people on camera one at a time. It's not as big Zoom meeting where we just get everybody on at once. That's just really unmanageable. I bring people on one at a time to ask a question to the guest. Um, and when, you know, when Ollie had the bravery to kind of open up and start talking about that, um, the whole community was just like showering him with support in the chat. It was amazing. And um, and that's, you know, that's just what we, what, it's what we're about. It's what Acts On This is all about. Genuinely is, um, is about actors lifting each other up, not tearing each other down because of jealousy and envy and all the bullshit that happens in a lot of other areas of our, uh, of our industry. But I think what David says there is just really valuable um, and shows that people right at the top of the game, you know, David is working, you know, in America at the top of the game, you know, Homeland was one of the biggest shows in the world, won Golden Globe Awards. Um, he's now in Supergirl, you know, he just is winning in terms of, you know, what we would want to be working on as actors and you know the the, the level of shows um and yet he's he's honest and vulnerable enough to go yeah i still have issues with this right now like today you know and um and the one way he deals with it is talking to a therapist and i just think everybody we should all have therapists like i mean ultimately a therapist like is just someone to talk to in it um you know i think we can be therapists for each other within this community i think a lot of us uh, a lot of us probably are but uh, but yeah if you're not where you uh, you know where you want to be and you're feeling that right now um, cuz it's a really you know it's a tough time right now and like david said this industry is bruising at the best of times you know right now it's closed so <laughs> it's pretty frustrating for a lot of people if they want to get work although stuff is happening there is light at the end of the tunnel and stuff is going back into production there's people in our community who have landed roles in coronation street this week um, cuz they are they've been casting behind the scenes for when they open up again i don't know the exact date of that but i know it's very very soon for a lot of the soaps and serial dramas um so there is light stuff is happening again uh, but just realize yeah you are absolutely not on your own if you uh if, you know if you're not feeling uh, feeling too great i was coming to the comments see what's going on all right sarah hope you're well um hope uh, you are good Essa says yeah i love how great and supportive this group is it is honestly no it genuinely is and it's like it's quite astounding actually like it's always what i've kind of preached and what i've wanted and i've you know i've tried to 
really stand for zero tolerance when it comes to whining and whinging and people, you know, not supporting each other. And I think we just, they say, don't you, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. I've hoped to just put a positive vibe out there and obviously, have, you know, attracted all you lot. Linda, how you doing? Brendan, how you doing? Hope you were well, mate. Um, hope it's good. So I didn't see, but I've seen you posted another, Brendan's a nurse. Um, but he's an actor as well, and uh, he's got a Facebook page, I think, called Nursing the Actor, where he kind of does some funny spoof comedy sketches or all kinds of other stuff as well, you know, while he's at work and he's in his PPE and stuff. Um, I saw you post another one, Brendan. I've not watched it, mate, but I, uh, I saw a lot of likes on it, so I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's good. Um, keep us uh, posted with what you're doing. Um, so I'll play you the... Uh, before we get into Q&A, and I'll show you what's going on this week, I'll play you a little clip of Matt's as well, Matt Lucas's. Um, yes, we did get to sing... Uh, thank you, baked potato. Uh, Matt's obviously uh, incredible song that he has uh, taken over the charts with in lockdown. Raised a lot of money for Feed the NHS. It was a song that he wrote for Shooting Stars when he was on Shooting Stars with Vic and Bob in like 1995. He's brought it back and reworded it for um, you know for lockdown to feed the NHS. Um, thank you, baked potato. One thing about acts on this that you'll notice when we all got on and we started singing. One thing I can promise you if you join this community and if you, you know, if you get a membership at adsonthis.tv and you take in this content and you and you join the webinars and you get involved and you listen to the podcast and the videos that I put up, I can absolutely guarantee you we'll get further in your acting career faster than you ever have before. I mean, I really am that confident. I can guarantee you it's going to happen. Uh, you know, if you want to get an agent and you're just starting out, I promise you if you follow the the advice on that site from the very agents you probably want to sign with and you take action on those things within within six months a year you'll probably have an agent one thing i cannot promise you and one thing you will realize <laughs> when i play this clip is that you will have a singing career or you will do very well in a choir uh, we were abysmal but our heart was in it I'm very proud of us all for giving it a go. Um, and I think it was my instruction that let everybody down, basically. We had two minutes to do this with Matt at the end. He had to get a call uh, to America in before seven o'clock. This was about five to seven. And I tried to arrange it so that we would sing a line each one at a time. I didn't explain very well. And it turned out that Matt sung half the song himself. Uh, but you hear a little bit of it on here. But this is uh, this is Acts on This TV jamming with Matt Lucas. Comedy royalty, actor, writer, comedian has created some of the biggest comedy shows on the planet. It's probably got every kind of award on the earth coming out of his ears. And he has also one of my favorite Twitter accounts on Twitter, Mr. Matt Lucas. Good evening. And housemate Jamie, how are you both? How do you stop yourself from you know, putting yourself down if you're not getting like the results and the views that you want. Don't compare your inside to other people's outside. Everyone is struggling. Everyone feels like, unless you're like a kind of sociopathic narcissist, everybody feels like a bit of an imposter, a bit of an imposter like, wow, I don't have the right to do this. Even the people right at the top. In my head, I was thinking, oh, what will make people laugh? I never thought about what would make me laugh. I just thought, what would make people laugh? And I went and I did this act, and it was it was pretty awful. Um, and it, and it took me a while to think. No, I need to make myself laugh and hope that makes other people laugh or some other people laugh. You know, you're never going to please everybody. Would you say you have to break into sort of like the comedy circuit on stage in order to sort of get that leg up into TV? It does depend, in a way, right? in terms of stand-up. It's like, do you really want to be a stand-up? Because if you really want to be a stand-up, you have to do the circuit. That's pretty much it. The director will say like, okay, you need to be funny, but stop trying to be funny. And like, on one hand, I, I get what they mean, but there's just a, a level of mental gymnastics I don't quite understand how to process. And I was wondering if you had any words or advice about that. So sometimes there is just a thing Whereas a director who doesn't necessarily know you, you need to trust you to know that you're funny. If it would help me in my career as an actor to go to drum school. Definitely read everything in this chat. So just because you didn't get the role, it doesn't mean you weren't exceptional in the audition. And just because you did get the role, doesn't That's mean you were particularly it, good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, you only heard one one line from Bay Potato there. If you want to hear the full thing, go and check out the full replay on AtsOnThis.tv. Um, you will pee yourself. Um, it, it was it was insane. Um, but yeah, super super interesting chat, and there was some absolute gold. 
that Matt drops in that chat. And he, he one thing actually, um, I've not got a clip of it here, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. One thing that I found fascinating was when he was talking about how how Matt and David Walliams would audition people for Little Britain, and he said, you know, sometimes. Um, he said, say they, they were looking for, it could be something really specific, like they needed a mid-30s Spanish-speaking woman and they needed this person quickly to film a sketch with them for Little Britain like the following week. And he was like, listen, there might only be three people in London that qualify for that. One of them might be working, that leaves two people. He says, and on, on some occasions, people can come in and they'll, they'll all be brilliant. Everyone will be brilliant. He said, and then, and then it comes down to the fact that you didn't get the part because of something really silly. Like, you know what? We just liked this person's hair better or whatever it would be. That wouldn't apply for me today with uh, my hair. But yeah, um, it can come down to that. And what he said is some people then go away and they tell themselves this narrative that they were shit and that they didn't deserve the part, and they must have screwed up. When they didn't, they actually did a phenomenal job at the audition, but so did five other people, and it just went to someone who they liked a physical attribute of more or less or whatever. Um, so he said that can happen on one hand. So don't walk away from an audition ever thinking you did a shit job because you didn't get the part, because it could come down to something really flimsy. Danny Broccolo said the same thing when he was talking about the casting for Brassic last week. But then he said something I've never heard before. <laughs> I think it's really interesting. He said out of those two people who, who come in for it... You you know, if you can only find two people, he said they could come in and they might be both absolutely rubbish. But you need to cast somebody because it has to be done like the next week. And you, you have a conversation and go, you know what? They're both rubbish, but this person here are good enough. We'll take a few lines off them. We'll redistribute the lines to other cast members and we'll just about get through it. So he said, on one hand, don't think you're shit because you didn't get the part. But on the other hand, never think you're brilliant or you're amazing or you're too good because you did get the part. And I just thought that's brilliant because it just keeps you, it keeps you like level, doesn't it? If you're not going to get high on your own supply, you're not going to get too, you know, too up yourself because you've landed roles. But equally, when you walk away from an audition, you don't get it. Then, um, then you, you know, you don't have to beat yourself up about it. You know, every casting director I have ever had on over the last eleven years, almost uh, running acts on this TV, I've interviewed practically every big casting director out there. Um, they've all said the same thing. It can come down to stuff completely out of your control if you don't get the job. But even if you do get it. Matt's got a great point. It doesn't mean for some reason that you're absolutely better than everybody else. Um, so I just thought it was really, really interesting advice. Um, there's loads of stuff that Matt said in that. You know, it's a, a, a 90 minute chat. Do go check out the uh, the full the full version over on Acts on this. It's in the members area for those people who are already members. It's in there right now for those people who aren't members. Get your membership uh, with the best thing. Seriously, just the best thing you do for your career. And you can literally jump on calls with people like Matt Lucas, like David Harewood, um, like who's coming up tomorrow. I'll show you who's coming up tomorrow now. Um, I've had loads of requests to get Shaheen Baig on Acts on This TV before. Um, and it's something that I'm absolutely working on. Shaheen's one of the biggest casting directors in the country. She's very well known for casting Peaky Blinders in particular. Everybody, when Peaky Blinders was blowing up, was like, I've got to get in front of Shaheen. I've got to get in front of Shaheen. Um, well, um, so this is a shout out to Safa, actually, who's in, in the community. Safa had a one-to-one -one, uh, with Shaheen's uh, casting associate, Johnny Boutwood, and put a little word in for me to say that she is a member of Acts on This TV um, and is taking part in these webinars. Um, so she messaged me to say, do you want me to, uh, yeah, do you want me to put a, a word in with Johnny, see if he'll do one? Um, and then I direct messaged him on Twitter. Again, Twitter's super, super powerful. Um, and he's up for it. And it's going to be tomorrow night, 7.30. Uh, we're going to do a 90-minute mastermind session with Johnny Boutwood from Shaheen Bay Casting. Um, he's been in casting for 10 years. He's been working with Shaheen for four years. He's worked on the biggest projects, you know, at that office. And we're just going to do a real deep dive into how Shaheen's office works uh, what you can do in order to get on their radar, the things they like, the things they don't like, because every casting office is different. That's something as well that you need to realize. Just because one casting director likes you to do something in, in a particular way, it doesn't mean that another one will either. Um, so the more, same with agents, you know, so the more you can understand about the nuances between offices and what they do and don't like, ultimately just, you know, the more equipped you're going to be, you know, to, to promote yourself the right way. And um, so here's a little chat with Johnny, a little trailer that I did. Um, yeah, if you want to join and you want to, you want to check out uh, other guests that are coming up, go to actsonlist.tv forward slash live for a full schedule of events. And I'll talk about what's coming up in a minute. But, um, but this is Johnny, you're going to love him. Such a great guy. 
These keep on coming actors, I am back once again with another invite for you guys to another incredible Act On This.tv live webinar, this time taking place on Tuesday the 9th of June at 7.30pm with this amazing man here, casting associate at Shaheen Bay's office right now, Mr. Johnny Boutwood. Johnny, you've worked on some absolutely incredible shows over the years, not just at Shaheen's office, throughout the industry, credits like Line of Duty, Mr. Selfridge, Ripper Street, um, obviously at Shaheen's now, you guys cast some of the biggest drama, some of the biggest shows in the world, stuff like Peaky Blinders, The Virtues was an incredible drama recently, and comedies, um, one of my favorites, Man Like Mo Bean. Um, absolutely love it, love what you're doing. Thanks so much for taking part in this webinar. What are we going to be talking about on Tuesday? Well, we'll just be talking general kind of questions that you might have. Um, if anything, maybe bring a slightly different question from what we usually hear, kind of be creative with it. Um, I try and give the most informative answer I can give. Um, and you know, it's it's we'll have fun. It's a Tuesday evening. Yeah, come and come and have some fun. Just yeah, come and have some fun. Yeah. Bring your A game though. Yeah, let's get some questions in that are not the usual kind of casting director, casting associate kind of questions. Let's get inventive, but also let's get get down like the nitty gritty guys. What is really going to help you move your career? forward faster johnny is here to answer all of those questions if you want to jump on camera literally with me and johnny talk one-to-one -one, uh with johnny you know and get all the advice and help you know that you need to move your career forward get yourself over to act on this.tv forward slash live for full details of how to take part and johnny i always ask every guest this but a bit of pressure why don't actors want to miss this one well i'll, uh, I'll probably be having a beer so you'll probably be able to catch me off guard <laughs> and uh, the Tash may or may not be here, or it may be Twizzled. Who knows? There you go. Join us to find out about Johnny's Tash. We'll see you there. Act on this. TV <laughs> forward slash live. <laughs>so will johnny's johnny's tash be there or will it be will it not be there will it be twizzled will it not be um join us i mean that's that's one reason to join us definitely 7 30 p.m tomorrow if you go to act on this.tv forward slash live i'll show you now i'll share my web browser um you'll see what's uh what's coming up on the site um because there's something else that I've not I've not really announced yet, I don't think. But you, members will might have noticed it. Uh, maybe will have noticed it in their members area, and I've put it up on here today as well. Uh, just 22 hours, so we're going to be live with Johnny. By the way, that countdown there is live. Uh, but we've got this next week as well. This is going to be amazing. So uh, we've got a live casting Q and A, live mastermind session with not one but two of the biggest casting directors in UK TV as well. Um, Andy Briley and Victor Jenkins from the casting office. A few weeks ago, we had their casting associate, Seth Mason, on, um, who was amazing, talking about you know the incredible dramas that they're casting there. Um, and now we're going to have Andy and Victor two for one. I mean, what can I you know possibly say? I mean, these guys are responsible between them for casting stuff like Silent Witness, Spanish Princess, The Watch, David Tennant's upcoming drama, Des, um, you know, they, they cast absolutely huge, huge stuff between them. Um, and uh, you're going to get a chance literally again to jump on camera and talk to these guys one-to-one, -one, get your acting career questions answered, get some coaching. Um, and like Johnny said there, you know, and this is really what I want to hit home for tomorrow when, we, when we're with Johnny, um, is let's get, you know, let's really get down to the nitty gritty of what you want, you know, and, 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 you know, Johnny's like, you know, let's not ask the same kind of questions. Um, that doesn't mean making up wacky, crazy questions for the sake of it. You know, there's no point in going, all oh, right, I'm, I'll have to make something up. Johnny, what's your favorite chocolate bar? Um, you know, <laughs> it's got to be interested in terms of your career, but maybe there is that vulnerability. Like, you know, the question that Ollie came up with, you know, and he, and he just put his, he just put it out there to David Harewood. He's like, look, this is where I am at right now this isn't a theoretical question this is what i am struggling with right now um and it opened up a real conversation that i think benefited every single person on that call and every single person who will go on to watch that replay please do watch it if you've not seen it already um so bring that openness with you tomorrow and with victor and with andy and with another guest that I'm going to announce for the week after that, who is a name that I guarantee you, a very famous actor that you all will know, you'll have all seen his stuff recently. Um, but let's like, you know, just get, I just really want to get into it. <laughs> like, what is it exactly that's screwing you up right now? What is it that you need? What can't you achieve right now? What do you think's unachievable? You know, where are you talking yourself out of stuff? How can you, you know, equip yourself so that you can go after what it is you want right now rather than convincing yourself you've got to wait six months for it, um, you know, or whatever. So please, like, like I say, bring your A game, you know. I want, um, I want Johnny to come away from that webinar going, yeah, 
this community is amazing. These guys are all on it. They know exactly what they want. It was really interesting because then hopefully, you know, I mean, that's great feedback that we'll hopefully get back to Shaheen. Uh, and then Shaheen Babe might come on and do a, uh, you know, do a webinar. That's what's happened with Seth Mason. He came on as Victor and Andy's uh, cast and associate um, and loved it. And now Victor, he, Victor DM me on, on Instagram and went, yeah, we're up for it. Let's, let's do it. So I'm relying on you, <laughs> basically, folks. It's down down to you lot if we uh, if we can convince Shaheen Bay to come on off the positive feedback from Johnny Boutwood. Um, but Johnny, in his own right, is going to be so valuable. He's such a good guy. Seth Mason was uh, was also you know when he came on was like you've got to get Johnny on. Um, it just seems really really sound, um, and you will get real honest advice out of him. Like he said, he's going to be having a beer, so you'll probably catch him off guard. Um, Essa says she loves Silent Witness. Tanika's in the house. How are you, Tanika? Says I've been craving the whole of last week and uber gave me 50 percent off what are you talking about food uber ain't giving you 50 percent off uh, a johnny boutwood webinar i would love a voice singing coach says brendan i'm not giving any real oomph in my singing voice right now but i don't want to damage it but i know i don't uh, but i know a coach could really help a lot there's loads of singing coaches uh, online and, and you can do obviously sessions via skype and via zoom brendan definitely mate. that's something you can certainly do even whilst we are social distancing um, and stuff. If anybody's got any recommendations for Brendan, please drop them into the comments right now. Uh, that will be good. He's based in uh, in Hampshire. Um, so we're going to do some Q&A. What have we got? We've got like half an hour left. Um, we're going to do some Q&A. Um, we can literally just talk about anything, guys. What do you want? I feel like over the last few weeks, because I've been doing so many webinars on these Monday night calls, really, we spent the whole hour talking about what you know the upcoming webinars and what's going on from here on out by the way just to let you know um we're going to get one webinar a week for premium members of ads on this.tv and they will fall on alternating days of the week every other week so it's going to be tuesday then thursday tuesday then thursday so you get four a month two on a tuesday two on a thursday uh, and that's because people do acting classes on different nights and some people could make Tuesdays, some people could make Thursdays. So to make it fair, so that you can make at least 50% if you have an acting class on a Tuesday or a Thursday, but you can make 50% of these calls live and thus get on camera. They're still incredibly valuable to catch up on, on the recording. But if you want to be there live and talk to the guests, um, yeah, it's going to be Tuesday and Thursday. So Johnny's tomorrow, that's a Tuesday, and Victor and Andy are next Thursday. And then this actor, fingers crossed, if he can make it, will be the following Tuesday. And then we'll do another one on the following Thursday. And we'll just keep doing that. The recordings will hit your members area um, the day after the live event. And let me just hit this home as well. I'm going to share my browser one more time. This is really important because some people, I think, are getting a bit confused in terms of uh, joining those, the Zoom calls, joining these webinars. You don't have to wait for your um, for your email, you know, I send out two emails on the day of a of a, of a live event, um, or if it's a, a meetup that we're doing online, like a social event, like we did on a Saturday, I might just send one email out about that the day before. Um, but if you're not checking your inbox or you miss emails, or maybe somehow it ends up in your junk folder or your spam, if you click into your members area at on this TV. Your links are already there for all upcoming events. So if you look at the second section down there, it says upcoming live calls and how to join them. I'm not going to click in there because it will show you the links. I don't want to show them publicly because they're private, obviously. But if you click into that section, you'll already find the links in there for both Johnny's and Victor and Andy's um, webinar now. Like they're there now. Uh, and whenever we do, you know, another event, you will find the links in there um, at the very, very latest, you'll find them there, The I'd say like, I mean, at the very latest, the day before. If it's a social event, maybe I'll put it in the day before. If it's a webinar, it'll be in there like a week before. Um, but if it's one of our meetups or we do a cocktails and conversation evening or something like that, um, it might be in there just the day before. So just keep checking that page, check your members area, and you'll never have to rely on on the email invites that go out because I don't want people missing them. Um, sometimes email is just pretty unpredictable, to be honest. There's nothing I can do at my end. There's no technology available on the planet that can guarantee every email I send um, you know, to the 15,000 people on the ads on this email list um, will get to that inbox. Sometimes they just get blocked at source. Sometimes they'll go into spam folders. All kinds of stuff can happen when you're sending that volume of emails. It's not like I'm sending one email from my personal email account. Um, so I can't guarantee it's going to hit your inbox every single time. One time, one one way you can help me do that is to whitelist the, if you go into any email you've received from Acts on This, you might see that it comes from a company called Kajabi. That's the server, like the email service provider that I use to send the emails out. If you just copy and paste the email address that that email has come from, 
into your whitelist on your uh, on your email app. It should bring every email I send you directly into your inbox. On Gmail, if you put if you click that yellow star next to any email I've sent you, all future emails will come into your inbox. Um, you can add you know act on this .tv as a domain to your um, you know to your email client as well, um, and that will give you the best chance of um, of getting everything into your inbox. Um, but you can always check your members area there, so, so it's fail safe. Um, uh, Lysia says, hope it's Joseph Gilgan. It's not Joe Gilgan as the actor, but I'm still working on that. Danny had a good time. Danny Broccolis had a good time on his webinar. I reckon Joe is just a stone's throw away. I'm sure we can get Joe to uh, to take part in something soon, for sure. Um, but it's someone absolutely on, on that level, has worked with the biggest names in this country and is in a very big Netflix drama at the moment, is in a very big Sky drama at the moment. Um, really decent guy. And also just seems like a lot of fun in terms of um, just anything that I've seen him do, interviews or even the characters he plays um, are still just uh, just very, very, you know, very, very good fun. Um, he does a lot of serious stuff as well. He was in an incredibly big film not long ago um, about the war that was very big. Wink. Um, that's a little clue for you as well. Um, yeah, some some really big stuff. Uh, Alicia says she's still hoping for the voice webinar. We're definitely doing that. So Peter Dixon um, is the voiceover man, runs a company called Gravy for the Brain. Um, you know, Alexandra Burke, that guy. Um, he's already hooked me up. I've done a podcast with him. Um, I'll show you him again. I'm spending a lot of time over on the site today. But if you scroll down to the section where it says features with actors, and then you click into... By the way, I don't know if you know this, right? So it only shows you 10 of you know the the first 10 in each of these sections there is a little link there that says show more you've got to click on that by the way if you want to see more there's so much content and that's on this dot tv and sorry to those on the audio experience you won't see that but if you click onto page two halfway down there it says how to land voiceover work with voice uh, of the x factor peter dixon um there's a whole podcast there me and him sat down in a very famous studio in london and we recorded a how many minute podcast is that an hour and 35 minute podcast on how you can get into voiceover. We talk about his voiceover training company, Gravy for the Brain. We talk about how he got into voiceover with the X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. Um, he even intros the whole podcast with, uh, welcome to another act on this podcast uh, as voiceover man, uh, which is great. So, And we, we just we just talk about the, you know, the reality of working in voiceover. It changed Peter's life. It's changed my life. Um, not the podcast, actually getting into voiceover. But if you listen to the podcast and get into voiceover, it could probably change your life as well. Um, so I want to talk yeah i want to bring peter on for a webinar we're going to talk all about that there's already a discount code for people who, who are in act on this.tv who are a member to get a 25 percent discount on gravy for the brain so don't sign up to gravy for the brain without going into your members area i'm going back in i'm going back in again to show you at the very 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 bottom um it says there at the bottom um save on voiceover training with gravy for the brain i'm not going to click into it because it'll show people the discount code um, that's just for premium members of Acts on This, but you will save 25% um, on your Gravy for the Brain membership. So don't sign up unless you click in there and you get your discount code. Otherwise, you are throwing money away. Um, yeah, depending on when you bought your Acts on This membership, depending on when you bought your... God, if you got into Acts on This early, depend, you know, years ago, the discount you would save on a Gravy for the Brain subscription would pay for in full your acts on this subscription if you got in at like 2014 ish 15 maybe <laughs> so if you're one of the ogs um then you you can get a saving that will cover the price of your actual uh of your actual membership um right what else is going down david bell's here right david hope you uh hope you're good mate um right let's do some q a let's just open it up is it cillian murphy no it's not but that'd be good wouldn't it That'll be a good one. Um, no, it's not. But it's you, you're going to be excited about it. Honestly, you will, definitely. And I'm sure quite a few of you are probably watching a series on Netflix that is in right now. So, um, so yeah. I'll, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to not going to tease you anymore or, or give you any any info because I've still got to confirm confirm the date with him. To be honest, I only emailed him yesterday, so it's definitely going to happen though. Just can't tell you exactly when. Um, so so when um, yeah when I know obviously I will uh, I will let you guys uh, I'll let you guys know. So what what can I do for you? Basically, what do you want to talk about? I mean, we can talk about voiceover if you want, or we can talk about anything at all that you're struggling with. I started doing some videos today. Just I'm just going live for like five minutes, 10 minutes, um, a few times a day now, just because I'm getting the same questions asked and I have been for the last decade in emails, really kind of like what some would seem as basic stuff, but stuff that everybody 
um, struggles with, you know, things like, you know, how do I get an agent? You know, how that's something that I know so many people um, have struggled with or are struggling with in the community because, you know, how do I change agents? How do I upgrade to an agent that might be, you know, a step? up from where I am right now because I feel like I've earned a step up because I've you know I've, I've got work from the agent that I'm with and I feel that I'm at a level where you know I'm ready to kind of move up a bit so um I started answering questions like that you know just as a video and then I can send people who email me to the video it makes it a lot easier than me just writing the same email out 100 times a day um, but let me uh, let me know what you want to talk about I'm all yours basically till 10 o'clock we've got 23 minutes um so uh so let me know sam says i'm having a bit of a range crisis how do you go about better understanding oh the vocal range do you know what i'm gonna stay in my lane sam when it comes to singing because i know brendan's opened up the topic of singing on here tonight um but i i am not gonna even pretend to be able to advise anybody i mean i focus mainly you know like really heavily on tv and film can't even really tell you about musical theatre or theatre, you know. I'm not afraid to go, nope, I will leave that to somebody else. Um, so anybody who knows about singing, um, I thought when you said range, you meant kind of like casting bracket, casting type, you know, your, your, your range as an actor. Uh, when it comes to singing, I have no idea, Sam. I will leave that to people like Brendan who might know a bit more about that than me in the, uh, in the comments. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, let me know if I can help you with anything acting related. So Alicia's got a question says uh normally it's wait six months to reapply would you say it's the same during covid in terms of acting agents alicia is that what you're talking about i think that must be what you're referring to um it's do you know what it's a difficult one if it's quite hard if if you know there has been a change at an agency i.e imagine like you were in a situation where you know an agent isn't signing you because they have two other girls on the books like you and that's a really legitimate reason for not signing somebody because you don't want too many of the same type because it just means that you can't get you can't get everybody work. So it means that, you know, you're going to have to disappoint, you know, two out of the three clients that you've got on the books that look the same or you can't put them all up for the same thing. You know, you're making too much competition for yourself. Um, you know, and are you going to be happy as a client when you're like, you're, you're like, you've taken on loads of people like me, you know, I wouldn't like that myself. You know, if suddenly my agent took on five guys who look the same as me. But if you know, that that's the case where they've got two of you and you know one of them has left, then that's a perfect time to get back in touch regardless of how long it's been. Because <laughs> I'd be like, oh, okay, right, yeah. Okay, four weeks ago it was a no, but I've just seen Claire who was one of the reasons why you couldn't sign me and now she's emigrated and she's gone to America. So was wondering if I could sneak in. Um, that happened with my voiceover agent, to be honest. The week I got my voiceover agent, their general northern voice um, a guy called uh, Rob. Oh, what was his name? I even know his name. Rob, Rob, Rob. I remember his second name in a minute. Lovely guy. Um, Rob emigrated to Canada and he was their general northern voice. Now, I just happened to apply the week that he was going. Otherwise, there'd been no way I was going to get in that agency. Absolutely no chance at all. Um, so sometimes, yeah, if you know people are moving on, then you can apply sooner than the six-month mark. Um, if something has changed drastically in your career, so if you write to an agent and they can't represent you, but then suddenly off your own volition, you get a job on TV. You land two lines on Coronation Street because you've networked with Jenny Radcliffe at ITV and you've self-taped for her and she's given you a part. That currency you have you go straight back to the agent that you want and say, listen, I've got this job now. I will let you broker the deal and take the commission if you are prepared to rep me after that. And some, you know what, some agents will say, and I've known this happen before, some agents will say, I'll broker it for you and I want no commission because I still can't rep you afterwards because we've still got two people like you, but I'll do the deal for you as a favor because you're nice um, and uh, and I can recommend other agents for you. Um, and some have said, yeah, you know, okay, I will broker the deal and yeah, let's see if we can get you more work after this. Um, so it's still not a guarantee uh, but that's another reason to go back sooner than six months. It's really like, it's so different. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of nuances there and, and it's different horses with different courses. I don't think COVID makes a difference in terms of, I don't think that would necessarily give you scope to get back in touch with them earlier just because it's COVID. Um, if anything, people are going to be very cautious right now because they don't know what's going on with the industry and they've got to look after their existing client list however saying that and we know from the two webinars we've run with agents over lockdown and now seven people in our community have signed with those agents um we know that um you know agents books are open right now 
Um, so you've just got to test the water and, you know, follow these agents on Twitter as well. See what they're doing. See if they're taking on other staff. You know, sometimes agents expand and they take on another assistant, which means they can take on more clients. If you really go deep on knowing the industry, then you'll get a feel for when it's right and when it's not. Um, but yeah, there's no, I mean, there's no hard and fast rule to be honest, but if you've got something fresh to say, Andy Pryor, casting director for Doctor Who said it perfectly. So when you're reaching out to people, no one cares if you reach out again, as long as you've got something fresh to say, you know, it's as simple as that. So if you're writing with something new or you've got a new show reel or whatever, um, you know, and you know, someone's left anything like that, reach out if you've got something fresh to say, um, definitely. Um, cause yeah, so Alyssa said, yeah, she started applying in March, wondering, do I hang fire till September to reapply? Yeah. I mean, you know, March what was that April, May, June, July, August. Yeah. September's fine. September's absolutely fine to apply again. Um, they won't even remember, I don't think, first time around. They'll be so caught up with COVID now and so happy, hopefully, by September. If we've got a vaccine and we're allowed out again, they'll be like, yeah, come on, I'll take everyone on. Um, so, yeah, I would, uh, yeah, I would definitely apply again. I haven't ever, I've never been taken on by an agent first time. I've never, uh, Jane, the agent I'm with now, I applied to when I left drama school, the week I left drama school, got a lovely letter back saying it was a no. Uh, about eight months later, I'd started acting classes and it was a casting director running the acting class who actually got back in touch with her on my behalf and said, look, you probably need to sign this guy. He's, he's all right. Thankfully, he thought it was all right. Um, and uh, and then I had a meeting with her and then I got signed. So don't, you know, don't give up on the first no. It's one step, cl- every no is one step closer to that yes. Um, I've never had that happen. There's so many actors I know that have, that, that have had the same thing happen where it's been a no first time. Um, and then it's been a, you know, if you're still, some of them say to you, I've had this before, they say, look, if you're still, I can't take you on right now, but if you're still in the same position in six months, get back in touch. Um, and they mean that, you know, so I think six months is fine. September, get in touch. Um, so uh, what else is uh, is going on on the chat? Any other uh, burning questions that you've got? Uh, still seeing some singing questions that I can't help you out with, but um, Tanika sings, Brendan sings. Um, and Alicia says, yeah, I've made a list on Twitter for agents and casting directors to keep on top of. Um, got a showreel lined up to get updated and shopping around for headshots. Last one's with, with Tony Blake, so we'll uh, we'll reapproach them then. Yeah, Tony's awesome as well for, for headshots as well. Um, when did you have your shots taken from Tony? I went to see Tony, uh, and for anyone who, who needs a headshot photographer, Tony Blake, I can totally recommend. And I don't recommend anybody I haven't used. Um, I'm not saying there aren't great headshot photographers out there. You know, of course there are, but Tony I've used a lot. Um, and Tony's been practicing with some new setups. Last time I was in his studio, we were just, you know, mucking around, just testing new stuff out. And he's got some killer setups with lighting, just nice, you know, different types of lighting. Because sometimes you get it to a point where you can just tell a photographer's shot. There's certain headshot photographers in our industry where just off the background, I'm like, yep, yeah, that's a blah, blah, blah. That's a da, da, da. As in like, you know, I know exactly who that is because they always take a photograph of someone on a brick wall. They always take a photograph of somebody with a bit of greenery in the background. Um, and it did get to the point where over the last year, me and Tony were talking. He was like, yeah, I can, you know, it's not a bad thing, but you could tell it was a Tony Blake shot. And sometimes, you know, for both the client and for the photographer, after a while, it gets a bit boring. I'm like, just taking the same kind of pictures. They look great. But we decided we were going to try and mix it up and test some stuff out. And Tony's definitely got some great, you know, great new sort of, uh, you know, techniques with lighting and stuff to just make those shots look different. So they'll stand out when a casting director sees it. They'll be like, oh, it's a bit different. I wonder who took that. Um, and they'll see it's Tony and they'll know who Tony is anyway. But yeah, he's just, he's sort of innovating himself. Um, which is uh, which is good, and you, yeah, because you said you. So Alicia's saying she had her pictures taken with him ages ago. Get back in touch with him. Don't know when you'll be able to start doing uh, headshots, although it is very socially distanced because you are two meters away from someone when you're taking the headshots. So I'm sure headshots can uh, can start up again pretty uh, pretty soon. Um, right, what else is uh, is going on? Anyone else got any other questions you want to ask about acting agents, voiceover, anything at all? Um, I've done a podcast with my voiceover agent, by the way. That was a little while ago. That's in the members area on actsonthis.tv. But maybe, I don't know, would it be useful to bring a voiceover agent on a webinar? You know, we'll have Peter Dixon on talking about the technique, talking about the career, how you build it. But would you want to actually pitch questions to an agent? I'm sure my agent would. We could bring the team on. I mean, like, they're amazing. 
Um, we could bring Hannah would well do it. Um, I'm sure Katie would do it. Jade would do it. We could maybe bring, <laughs> could maybe bring a team, a gaggle. I don't know what you call the what the plural of voiceover agents is. We may, maybe bring a gaggle of voiceover agents on um, to do a webinar on uh, yeah on on the mechanics, on the reality of booking work, and you know and talk about the shit people actually care about, which ultimately you know is the jobs, is the money, you know, and and there's no getting away from that. It's important. Um, so maybe you just want to hear some honesty on, you know, on actually the, the world and how you can, you know, make a living out of it as opposed to just doing it for fun. Um, Brendan says, yes, that would be great. Ross would love to speak to a voiceover agent. Um, right. Well, I can have a look at doing, uh, doing that. Do you know what? The world's our oyster. It's one thing I've realized, like obviously before lockdown, I, I went from doing live broadcasts like this and, you know, and, and live Q and A's from in 2014, 2015, Acts on This was all live Q&As because I didn't have the kit, I didn't have the microphones, I didn't have the setup, and the technology wasn't even there really to go out in person and record high-quality podcasts with people. And then over the years, I got more involved with high-quality video and audio, and then we went you know, into doing video podcast production, really high-quality video podcast production, uh, which is great. But now it looks like we're just going. We're just going back. We're just doing everything online and you know through Zoom effectively. But I think it works in terms of yes, the production value isn't as high, so it's not as glossy. But you know, you guys have never had access to my guests like this before, and that's probably more valuable, don't you think, than having something just look a bit better? Um, again, I'd love you know I can't wait to be able to sit down with someone and do an in-depth chat because I love talking to people about their lives. We don't get a chance to do that on the webinars where we really dive deep into somebody's life and who they are as a person. This is more about, you know, the business of the business and taking action and knowing what you guys need to do in order to get work, which is really important because that's why you become an actor to actually work, not just to doss about. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I can't wait to sit down and do this podcast, but I think for the foreseeable future, we will just be doing, um, you know, the Zoom calls because I think it just works where you get a chance to actually speak um, to, you uh, you know, to, to the guests. I think that makes a, makes a big difference. Um, Tanika says, Ross, in regards to doing your own voice reel, how do you find the background music to go with the piece? Like if you were doing a commercial, right? Okay. So it is, is my honest, honest, honest opinion, Tanika, right? Practicing voiceover, practicing recording at home, recording little bits and stuff for your own reel, super, super, super valuable and would really, really recommend everybody does it. When it comes to your actual reel though, in terms of what you would send to agents and what you would want to upload to sites to get you work. Um, there's a real, like with show reels as an actor, there really is a real art to sound design, to mixing audio and to understanding like the journey you take someone on through a voiceover reel. It would be like recording your own and expecting it to get you work in a very, very busy industry and in a very competitive industry would be a bit like, try to shoot your own show reel at home on a green screen rather than getting someone like Chris Stone to do it for you. Um, voiceover reel production is quite expensive. You will probably pay for a really top class, incredibly well produced, recorded in a professional studio, mixed by a master engineer um, with you know music that you're allowed to have on it. So you're not going to get stung with copyright um, and having scripts that are tailored to your voice because that's key. That is something you're going to pay about 500 quid for, maybe a little bit more. Um, but when you think one job, you know, and I'm not saying this to be, I've said this before, to go look at me, look at me. You know, I did one job last week for some TV adverts. It was 4,000 quid from my wardrobe. So if you're prepared to put in, you know, five, six fifty into a voice reel and you land, even the minimum, you land a couple of gigs. The minimum corporate fee is about 200 pounds for your basic studio fee. Um you really do get what you pay for. You do in the acting industry when it comes to show reels, the amount of people, and I try and warn people, but it feels like, you know, I think people sometimes just think I'm promoting someone because I'm getting commission. I always promote Chris Stone, and I promise you, the guy has never, ever, ever paid me a penny to promote him. It's just because I see, you know, that's for show reels, that's a show reels, just because I see people cutting corners and they go, rather than pay Chris 400 quid for a scene, I'm going to go with this guy here. I've got no track record. I don't really know him for 250. I'll save 150 quid. And honestly, I, I really mean it's the amount of emails and phone calls I've got where people are up, genuinely upset because they get the scene back and they go, yeah, the sound shit. I don't like my performance because they rushed me. I only got one take, two takes. Um, you know, it's not well edited. 
like and they just spent 250 quid and there's no you know there's no recourse they can't go and get the money back they signed a contract and that's it done and then they end up going to somebody like chris so rather than spend 400 they spent 650 and gone through a load of trouble it's the same in the voiceover world there are companies out there that will say i'll make you a voice reel for 99 pounds and i'll give you all the scripts and we'll master it for you and it'll have music and it'll sound great and they do the same reel for 35 actors with the same adverts that aren't suited for your voice. They're not tailored to you. They're not, you know, like, it'd be like, it's the equivalent of acting. Again, it's, it's it would be like me playing a, you know, getting a script where I'm playing Lady Macbeth. Well, I'm never going to be cast as that. <laughs> Why am I going to put that on my show reel? Um, and that would be the equivalent of you doing an advert or a corporate piece or a documentary piece on your voice reel that, isn't, that you're never going to get in real life. Um, because it's not your voice. It's not what your voice is suited to. So understanding your type as a voiceover artist is just as important as understanding your type as an actor. Um, so I would recommend if you really wanted a voice reel that you were going to get work with and you expected to be paid and it to book you the work, because un unlike an actor, it's your voice reel that does the audition for you. You very rarely have to do an audition where you, you know, it, it does happen. You know, I do do, do them. Uh, where you have to record a bespoke demo for somebody and they go, right, we, we've liked your voice reel, but we'd like you to record this paragraph of the script you would be doing if you got the job um, and we'll just want to see what you sound like doing that. Um, but a lot of the time you will just get booked off your voice reel, off the strength of your reel and they'll go, yeah, that's it, you know, and you'll get some good jobs off the strength of your reel, like really good jobs sometimes. So your reel has to be top notch. Um, so uh, I've gone around the houses there, but yeah, I commend you for, for wanting to record on your own and please do that. That is critical it's crucial for every voiceover artist to know how to record themselves. If you can learn how to edit, how to add music to stuff, um, super, super valuable because then you can make your demos shine and you will really stand out from the crowd. Um, so definitely do that. But if you're looking for an actual voice reel that you're like, right, this is it. This is what I'm going to use for work. Get a professional to do that for you. It will just make everything a lot easier. In terms of music, there are lots of royalty-free um, music places out there and um, there's uh, audiojungle.net is something that I've used quite a lot and you pay per audio clip like per per track um, royalty free tracks range in price a lot though when you buy them as one offs they can sometimes be 12 or 15 dollars even up to 25 dollars a track um, whereas you can subscribe to stuff like the owner of um, audio jungle is a company called Envato E-N-V-A-T-O now, Envato do something called Envato Elements, which is a subscription service where you pay a yearly fee and you can download as much as you want. There's a company called Audio Blocks that allow you to do that as well. Um, there was a company, Jason, um, a member of Acts on This, was telling me about the other day, and I can't remember for the life of me what that was. But ultimately, just Google royalty-free music subscription or something like that, and you'll see the options. But I can vouch for Audio Jungle and Envato Elements and Audio Blocks. Uh, I've used all of those uh, in the past, um, and you get to just use that then copyright-free. When you're uploading audio to YouTube, if you wanted to put your voice reel on YouTube, um, as a video, and I mean, you, you you would do that only. This is the thing as well. Actually, Brendan, I wanted to say, mate, because I know it's Brendan, you've put your voice reel up on Acts on this. I didn't get a chance to listen to it. But this is just something to think about, and I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but this is just directly from my agent and how I've worked for the last 15 years. We never, when we're putting promo out for me or anyone else, show my face or anybody else's face. And the reason for that is because people make judgments based on our appearance and based on our looks and based on where we look like we come from and how old we are and all this sort of stuff. And you don't want anyone to have any preconceptions of your voice before they hit play on your voice reel. So even celebrities that are, are you know, repped by my agent, they don't have their picture on the website. They don't have any visual reference of them at all. And it's really interesting because when I've been to studios after I've been booked for work, People have sometimes said to me, because, you know, I can make my voice sound older or younger or, you know, not nothing crazy, but just, you know, you make yourself sound more mature for the more mature, you know, projects. If it's a medical project, I don't want to be sound, you know, like I'm in my mid 20s. If I'm talking to, you know, 50 year old consultants who are at the top of their medical profession, they don't want to be lectured to on a voiceover by a kid who sounds 18. So, you know, you want to um, make your voice, you know, sort of lend itself to the material. But I've got to some recording sessions and they've gone, oh my God, I thought you were so much older. I thought you'd turn up and you'd be like 50 or like, you know, mid 40s. Um, so, uh, and equally, you know, people have been, uh, you know, thought on adverts where I've done a demo and it's been a really young sounding voice. They go, oh, you know, I thought you were in your 20s. 
I'm not. I'm in my late 30s. Um, so, yeah, so I noticed you'd put your face on your reel. And I'm not saying it's wrong or anything like that, but it's just something to think about when you're promoting it. Do you want that? Do you want anyone to make any preconception on you and what you might sound like before they hit play? Um, and that goes for everybody. So if you, were, so if I, and it's only my personal opinion, if I was going to put a video up of my voice reel on YouTube, it would just have text on saying, you know, who I was and my agent. It wouldn't have my face on it just because I didn't want anybody to go, oh no, he looks too happy. You know, and this is a, this is a, a water aid appeal for a third world country. Now he just looks too, you know, he's smiling. He wouldn't be, let's get this guy. He looks a bit sadder. Um, you know, so, uh, so just something to think about. Um, definitely, uh, when you are doing uh, when you are doing reels, and if you do use music, Tanika, and you upload to YouTube, YouTube has an automatic copyright algorithm that can sometimes, even on copyright free tracks, will pick it up and say, "No, you can't use this because you've not paid for the copyright." When it comes to that, what you will find is when you've downloaded the track from wherever you've bought it from, Audio Jungle or Envato, in your account section will be a license to use that music as a PDF document. You can download that. And then what you have to do is you have to upload that to YouTube when they put a copyright, like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, challenge to you, say, do you have the copyright for this? Um, you can then upload that PDF and then it'll be fine. You'll get to use it again. So um, that's something to think about as well. Whew, so that's, uh, that's voice reels for you. Um, I have now, <laughs> Brendan's saying, I have taken down all the photos now. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, you don't have to, mate. It's just, you know, it's just from my experience. I just don't want, you know what we're like, right? Even when we think we don't judge people, you know, we we do. We just do instantly, you know. You look at someone and it might not be they're judging you or your face or, you know, like your ethnicity, where you come from, what they think you might sound like. It might just be, Brennan, like, don't like your shirt very much in that picture, <laughs> you know, or whatever. You just don't want to be judged for anything. And we all, you know, we all do it. We look at someone and, and we make an, a, a judgment of what they might sound like. I do it with actors' headshots. The amount of actors' headshots I've seen where somebody looks mean in their headshot and they look really stern and they're going, you know, proper blue steel. And I think, bloody hell, they look like I'm not messing with them. And then they turn up to an act on this meetup when we could do them in person back when we were, we were allowed. And they're the most bubbly, joyful people. And I'm like, oh my God, your headshot does not, does not reflect your personality at all. It's one thing looking like something in one still frame. And then in real life or on film, you know, we're seeing people, even on film, at like a minimum of 25 frames a second. I don't know what your eyes see at. It's going to be a lot more than that. Um, but... But yeah, you know, it's very different to look like one thing in one one frame of a photo. And then when you actually move and you, you know, your mannerisms come into play, you know, you can look very, very different. So uh, I think we do just make some judgment calls, even if we don't mean to. And it's just subconscious and we don't really think that we're, you know, we're doing it um, just based on people's photos. And people might go, oh, you know, you know, that person's in their 50s. So they're going to sound like they're in their 50s. My mum is 68. And the amount of people who ring her on a cold call um, you know, and, and think she sounds like she's in her late 20s, early 30s. She's nearly 60 yet. Well, she's 69. Uh, ne oh, yeah, next year. Yeah, she's only just 68. Um, so we do we do make uh, judgments off, off what we think people should sound like based on age and stuff like that. Uh, and now he's put it on with just his name. Excellent, Brendan. That sounds uh, sounds good to me. Um, right, anyone, any more for any more? Um, otherwise, we will wrap it up. It's literally what? It's just a couple of minutes, a minute to 10. Uh, so we'll call it a day at 10 o'clock and I'll see you guys on the live webinar with Johnny Boutwood tomorrow night. Very excited about it. Alicia says, I'm really bubbly, but I just cast better as someone. I, I just cast better as someone fuming. <laughs> Lizzie is very bubbly, but she just has a she specialises in specialises in acting angry. So if you need an angry scouser, Alicia is uh, is your girl definitely, um, without a doubt. Um, Alicia is very funny though. You should do funny as well, Alicia. You are quite funny on the uh, on the webinars. Um, definitely very energetic, um, and yeah, you could definitely do some comedy as well as fuming. You don't have to just do fuming. Um, Steve Steve Goodwayne, look at him. He, he does a bit of both. He does fuming with David Platt on Corrie, don't you, Steve? And then um, he does something called Rebound where he plays Lazzie, this absolute mentalist, bit of comedy. Likes to mix it up. He does a bit of fuming and a bit of uh, a bit of fun. Um, I always try and guess people's age, says Tanika, when they call through to work. Ah, yeah, if you're talking to people on the phone, we all do it. We can't help it, you know. It's just like we do expect people to sound or look a certain way depending on demographic and age and all that sort of stuff so i think we voice over just let the voice reel do the talking um sharon's happy and friendly and positive but always gets cast as the complete bitch <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs> at least
least you know your niche, Sharon. Um, that's funny. That's funny. Um, well, you know what? Show them. Record some stuff where you are funny and positive and always happy and see if we can get you some parts as uh, as that as well. Um, right, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'll play the... Um, I'll play the... the uh, what's it called? Trailer uh, for Johnny Boutwood's... Um, feature tomorrow night please come and join us honestly it's not a sales pitch but if you're an actor and you're not a member of acts on this.cv um i do i don't like i say i'm not, i don't want to sound like i'm just going oh come and join because uh, you know i'm going to sell you this thing i think you're making a mistake genuinely if you're not because i know what it's like in this industry to not have access to the information that we share from from the biggest casting directors in the industry, the biggest agents, actors, writers, producers, these are the guys who are winning the BAFTAs, you know, who are working at the top of the game, who are casting the biggest projects in the world, um, you know, and to not want to be able to speak to these people one-to-one online, um, I think is crazy. I think if I'd have had this information when I left drama school 15 years ago, um, I would be so much further along in my career right now. And this is a way as well, if you are just starting out, freaking hell, to catch up and overtake your peers so very, very quickly because they're not doing this, you know. It's like they're not putting that time and effort into their career to network and really speak to the people who run the industry and, you know, can bring you in for the biggest shows on earth, can represent you can tell you how to progress your career you know from the comfort of your own home you can do this in your pajamas you don't even have to like leave your house and when you think you know yes i get it it cost you six quid a week to join it's cheap as chips most acting classes are 15 25 35 quid some acting classes workshops are 65 100 quid um it's like you would spend more on parking when you go to your acting class probably or on petrol than you would to sit at home with a glass of wine, chill out with us and have a great time. So um, so yeah, do get involved. Um, it's amazing, honestly. I'm so happy with the way that it's gone. And lockdown has really brought about some really positive change, I think, on the platform where you know, we're more... I don't know about you lot, but like I feel more connected with you lot than ever before. Um, Michelle, <clears throat> the answer to your question there is yes, and the answer is yes. It's, I, just can't, I just can't make it happen yet, but it's been agreed and it is happening. Um, Michelle's put a question on um, about a, another famous actor. Um, yeah, that's happening. That's I can guarantee you that's happening. Um, so um, so yeah, do come and uh, do come and get involved. Um, but I do feel we've got a really really tight knit community now, and we all know each other better than ever because we're talking in person rather than just talking, you know, on uh, on Facebook and stuff, which is uh, which is good. We literally all buzz about it. Get signing up, says Alicia. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, it's not. It's not like, you know, there's a lot of shit sold in this industry. Honestly, there really there really is. But I'm so proud of what we've achieved here together. It's not what I've achieved. It's what we've all done together and what some incredibly benevolent people in our industry have done by coming and getting involved with what we're trying to do here as well. And it blows my mind to think, you know, 11 years ago, I was sat in the spare room in my mum's house, like lost, thinking, freaking hell, I'm working for minimum wage in a shop. I'm hating my life. I've no idea what I'm going to do. You know, I need to, you know, make progress in my acting career. I need to learn about this industry. And then, you know, to look at it now and what it's become and how it's helping people. And it's amazing to get emails every day from people going, just want to say I've now got an agent because of this. Or, you know, David, I don't know if he's here tonight. Um, you know, uh, he, he he spoke to me on, on Zoom uh, when we were doing one of the cocktails and conversation evenings. And he's like, you know, I've got, I've had two offers from an agent this week based off the back of the webinars and the, and the podcast and that's on this. And it's like, this shit just works. If you act on it and you take this information and you use it, it's impossible in a way to not get further than you are now, to not make progress. Um, so do come and join us at onthis.tv forward slash live if you want to keep up to date with who's coming on as guests as well. And um, Tanika says, so effing excited for that about the person who Michelle uh, put up there. I'm not even going to mention it for the audio experience, all the people on the replay. Um, it's a very big guest and it is happening. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm excited about it as well. And he won't be coming on his own as well. He'll be bringing some people with him um from a project that i'm very excited about seeing when it when it finally comes out as well so uh so that's pretty cool um thank you sandra says thanks for a nice evening see you tomorrow looking forward to uh making my days uh since i joined this community amazing um awesome and uh Alyssa says i'm looking forward to accepting my oscar and giving this community a shout out you you know what 
is what's really interesting is I'd like to say you work well. I can actually say you're not the first. Someone has already done that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sure there will be, you know, there will be more. So um, so it's awesome. Yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to, for everyone to be standing up there winning Oscars and BAFTAs and going, little doth of the caps rats on this. Thanks. And we're all there. We can all be plus ones. So we'll be there. I think everything's going to be done on Zoom for a while. So we can definitely all be there. Um, right. I'm going to go, but I'm going to play you Johnny's uh, little trailer for those who missed it. And this is 7.30 tomorrow night with Shaheen Bay's casting associate, Johnny Boutwood, an incredible guy. We're going to be deep diving into casting from Shaheen's office, what they're about, what they like, what they don't like, what they're casting now, what's coming up, how they're getting over COVID, all that sort of stuff. And you're going to be able to jump online and um speak one-to-one -one with johnny um you know put your your questions to him and get some real real advice it's going to move the needle for you uh, right until tomorrow guys lots of love uh, and people are saying it already bye for now these keep on coming actors i am back once again with another invite for you guys to another incredible act on this tv live webinar this time taking place on tuesday the 9th of june at 7 30 pm with this amazing man here casting associate at shaheen bay's office right now mr johnny boutwood johnny you've worked on some absolutely incredible shows over the years not just at shaheen's office throughout the industry credits like line of duty mr selfridge ripper street and um, obviously at shaheen's now you guys cast some of the biggest drama some of the biggest shows in the world stuff like Peaky Blinders The Virtues was an incredible drama recently and comedies um, one of my favorites Man Like Mo Bean um, absolutely love it love what you're doing thanks so much for taking part in this webinar what are we going to be talking about on Tuesday well we'll just be talking general kind of questions that you might have um, if anything maybe bring a slightly different question from what we usually hear kind of be creative with it um, I try and give the most informative answer I can give um, and you know, it's it's we'll have fun. It's a Tuesday evening. Yeah, come and come and have some fun. Just yeah, come and have some fun. Yeah. Bring your A game though. Yeah, let's get some questions in that are not the usual kind of casting director, casting associate kind of questions. Let's get inventive, but also let's get get down like the nitty gritty guys. What is really going to help you move your career? forward faster johnny is here to answer all of those questions if you want to jump on camera literally with me and johnny talk one-to-one -one, uh, with johnny you know and get all the advice and help you know that you need to move your career forward get yourself over to actonthis.tv forward slash live for full details of how to take part and johnny i always ask every guest this but a bit of pressure why don't actors want to miss this one well i'll, uh, I'll probably be having a beer so you'll probably be able to catch me off guard <laughs> and uh, the Tash may or may not be here, or it may be Twizzled. Who knows? There you go. Join us to find out about Johnny's Tash. We'll see you there. Act on this. <laughs> TV forward slash live. <laughs>